Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth week of the LSU PhotoSock Creative Distancing Stream. It is today again, yeah. me and and Sam. I think hey. we can hear Sam. Yes. I mean, I'm talking. Yeah, we can hear, hear you. Me. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Things are already going better than they have been in the past. Uh, no, what was it? Two weeks ago, we had significant difficulty, like technical difficulties or something. I, I don't know. We seem to have a new problem every week. But hey, it's all part of the fun. Got to keep us on our toes. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. It's part of the creative process, just trying to get this stream to work. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, so today we are going to be doing just effectively our own little uh, editing projects. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of stuff in Photoshop related to a artist that I quite regularly go back to inspiration from called uh, Victoria Seema. And uh, uh, what are you going to be up to, Sam? What's your plan? Well, I've got a backlog of sheets that I've not processed, so I think I'm going to go back and I'm looking at this one uh, from 2019. And I'm going to shoot these photos July 2019, so almost a year ago. Still not really properly looked at them, but I'm going to go through them and hopefully do some sort of geometric. They're like landscape photos, um, just not geometric edits on them, see what we can do. Awesome. So, just in case everybody uh, who's watching has not come across Victoria Seema before, allow me to share my screen and show you guys what we're talking about here. So, Victoria Seema is a New York-based artist, and I came across her work a few years ago, and um, she does some very, very interesting stuff in Photoshop. Uh, we'll put a link to the website in the description, so you can have a look at her work. There we go. So go and have a look, guys. Uh, and there's a whole load of different stuff that you can take for inspiration from her site. So uh, she does some coffee coffee cup work, putting uh, all kinds of things into coffee cups, which is very, very basic Photoshop stuff and is great fun to try. And then we've also got some geometric reflections, something that Sam's going to try a little bit later, maybe with his uh, landscape photos. And then yep. uh, I'm going to try uh, a couple of these, which are what she calls Hue Don't Own Me, which is a kind of neon signs in dark situations and that kind of thing. Uh, all of which are like very, very achievable Photoshop projects. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the format for today. We're going to go back and forth between each of us so that we can uh, we can ke keep up with each, what each of us is doing. Um, and it's going to just be fairly chilled, really. You know, I don't think we're going to yeah. be you know, it's not going to be like frantic last week where we were trying to do live photography by yeah, two ends crazy, of the Skype exactly. call, <laughs> which was fun. <laughs> like but it's... it was fun. But I think we took on more than we could do, maybe. And uh, this week it's going to be nice, just simple. Yes, edit Very these photos, sure. yeah. make something look cool, relax, yeah. stream for a little bit, just have a bit of conversation, talk about what we're doing, what our process is a little bit, and then yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, again, if anybody wants to access material from the last few weeks, uh, you can head to the link that is scrolling past down here, and you can download sample photos from the last four weeks worth of streams, as well as a trial for Adobe Photoshop and Photopia, which is a great online editor. Uh, so I can quickly show you what Photopia looks like. There you go. It's very, very similar to Photoshop, and we've been using it quite a lot in the last few weeks. Uh, it's surprisingly full-featured, full actually. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we might, I don't know if we haven't actually talked about uploading the stuff that we're doing today, but we can, uh, we'll provide a link to Victoria Seema's work so you can have a look at that and take inspiration. And obviously on the stream, we'll talk through what we're going to do and what tools we're using and that kind of thing. So you can follow along if you want to, or come back later and uh, follow along with us on YouTube when we once we upload this on YouTube. So yep. yeah, hello from the present and also the future. Yes, the hello, future me. Hello, <coughs> uh, yeah. who's editing this at like probably midnight or something uh, later today. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I guess do you want to flip a coin or something? Do you want to start doing editing, or shall I start? I mean, I'm just scrolling through, looking at what I've got so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can you can tune into my side if you want to join on that. Yes. 
Sure, why not? Very good view of. I gave a quick, over, gave a quick overview. We missed all, the, all of what we were saying. All of what we were saying. Ago, in second yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I've got a shoot. Yeah, I've got a shoot here from, from almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. Um, from when I was in um, North when Germany. I was in North Germany. Um, um, and yeah, and yeah, I've got, I've got one of the reasons. That, one of the reasons that the time that the time lightning thing. Lightning thing. Um, um, but earlier in that day, earlier in that day, I went some sort of typical seasidey seasidey shots. So I hope so. I hope to do some basic edits. Basic edits. Begin with. To begin with. Um, and just sort of like just sort of like experiment. Around. See there, I was doing see there, orientation with sunglasses, and, sunglasses and, things. and things. Um, um, um it turned out all right, but, but I, all right, but I, I never these photos yet, these photos yet, all, yet all, not really um, them. Um, and then later on, and then later on, I can then go and do some geometric edits, geometric edits, um, but, um, almost uh, well, yeah, 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 cool, that's big, that's big. How about you? How about you? So, uh, allow me to swap over to my screen then, and I will quickly, uh, there we go, uh, let's swap over to my screen. There we go. So I'm going to be doing some editing off of some old photos on Lightroom. And um, this is like a weird collection of all kinds of stuff that I'm going to try and bring together into some edits. Uh, this is going to be inspired, as Sam mentioned, um, he's going to be doing looking at some geometric uh, reflections, geometric shapes and stuff. This is inspired by the artist Victoria Seema, who uh, I, come, I come back to again and again because there's some really interesting stuff that she does. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to be trying out uh, creating one of these, which is what she calls a who don't own me uh, style picture. I'm going to try that with some of the photos that I've got in my Lightroom album here, uh, as well as trying to do something like the photo that she's got on her page here on the home page, which I really, really like, uh, although I'm not completely sure if I'm going to be able to replicate the effect that she's got going on here. But uh, we'll see. Um, cool. Yeah, so um, Sam, do you want to start with the editing or shall I start with the editing? Up to you. I'm just, uh, I don't want, I've actually got one here. Yeah, I've got one here that I can do an edit on. Let's go yeah. to me first. Sure, okay, Sam, take or, or it, take them, it or away. Them. Aha, I'm here. Aha, I'm here. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, so yeah, I just, I just, um, just um, what's potential these, these, these ones, these which, ones is sort of, which is sort of, I think the sun's around here. I think the sun's around here in these photos. So they're shot, shot, so they're shot, shot towards the sun. They've got some very, got some some very faint sort of shafts, shafts of, light, shafts coming of light coming through. So I think a, so I think uh, a, um, I hope to be able to bring those out. Bring those out. Work out which ones actually go for. Actually go for though. though. Go for though. We've got some of them that go, some of them that go very high contrast. Um, um, there's some subjects. There's some subjects in there. Um, um, be interesting. But I think. Interesting. But I think we can bring out some of the faint details. Some of the faint details. Some of these. I think I might start. I might start with this one. This one. It's not particularly interesting. But I want to get a feel for how the how the the lunettes is looking. The lunettes is looking. The clouds and these clouds. So so. Just in Lightroom, bring it, it Lightroom, to bring it over to develop. Um, um, where do we start? Where do we start? I think it's fairly sharp. I think it's fairly sharp. Yeah, it's fairly sharp. Yeah, it's fairly sharp. So, so I'm just gonna start playing some slides. Playing some slides. What I usually do. What I usually do. Um, um, so we've got some. We've got some. It's basically it's basically blues, 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 yellows, and yellows. And nothing much else. Nothing much else. In so, photo. so. I'm trying to just move the saturation slider. I'm sort of slider, seeing, slider, I'm sort of seeing change, a between change between what black and white's giving, giving me, white's giving me. Um, and what um, and what colour might be more colour might be possible. I think the black and white. I think the black and white is nice. I think the colour is because taking your eyes, taking your eyes, areas like this, areas like this, here and up here. And I think, and I think that's doing it. That's doing it. I think in black and white, you see more textures. Textures. And I think that's going to be a nice look. Let's stick with white. Let's stick with saturation just down to zero. I'm actually going to quickly look at the presets. Look at the presets. And just glance over the, glance over the, hovering over the, hovering over the idea, get an idea of it, and different sort of edits. The high contrast is looking interesting. Well, that looks very odd, actually. That. This 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 Louis looking one. Louis looking yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. But I think but I think <laughs> I think it's going to be a weird. It's going to be a weird sort of um because because high contrast is, high contrast is, is, is bringing is, out a lot, bringing out a lot of drama in these in these um, um these large different these large different but areas. I want to bring, bring out some of the drama these areas. Areas. Which which areas. Look more faint. Which look more faint to me. Um, um, I'm yeah. going to just experiment. Just experiment with some. I don't know what to do. Filters maybe. Filters maybe. Um. Graduated filters. Graduated filters. 
Whether that's not going to be the area I want to do. No, I'm going to play around the curves. I'm going to start with. 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 You've seen this before. You've seen this before. This is just a distribution. Just a distribution of the image. This is an image. Um, um, and I can and I can manipulate those manipulate different areas, in different areas, and, and see see where what where pixels are, pixels essentially. are essentially. Because right now, by right now, by doing, seeing, I'm seeing when when I move when, when I move certain areas areas, I'm seeing that affecting, seeing that affecting larger and greater, larger and greater, larger and greater amounts, amounts in certain areas. In certain so, areas. so. Yeah, yeah. It sort of feels sort like of it feels like it, 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 it wants to be a vignette. It wants to be a vignette. This photo. I think that's partially. I think that's partially made towards the light. Towards the light. It's naturally, so it's naturally very bright. Very bright in the middle. Um, um. I might end up. I might end up like, like there. There. So I brought in. So a, I brought sort in of a, a slight contrast. Sort of a slight contrast. Curved contrast most curved. Um. Um. Tone curve. Tone curve. Um. Um. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I, I, definitely I, like raising, I like raising these these mid tones. Mid tones. So I might. So I might leave that not too leave far. That not too far up there. Up there. Raise the mid tones. Maybe. Mid -tone. Maybe. Hmm. Then I might. Then I might, 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 might bring in a um, bring in a um, graduated filter. Graduated top filter and bring top down, the bring down the sky. Because I feel like the sky is a bit. The sky is a bit bright compared to the ground. Because we've actually got quite a nice, symmetry, got quite going nice symmetry, symmetry going on there. Just if I look up, just if I look um, up at the um, small, the smaller navigator smaller view up here, view up here um, gives me a different perspective on the image. I can see it's quite a nice, quite a nice, obviously reflective, obviously reflective surface. I'm seeing against the sea. Against the sea. Um, um, we actually get a very nice, get a very nice symmetry, symmetry going on. Medist, medist. Um, um, it's a very. I, I love how um, reflective that is. Actually, it's it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, t I mean, I'm struggling I'm to bring out these, bring out these, these, um, these sort of beams of light in the middle. Right the middle so, I think I might, so I think I might. Mm. I'm too dark. I'm too still dark. Bright, that still bright, bright, still bright, bright, still 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 bright, well, I've just well, pulled in a, 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 a adjustment brush. Adjustment brush. Um, um, if I just sort of go crazy, you can see, see where I painted that. that. Mm. Um, um, so, so hopefully, hopefully, sort of a local sort of local just try to go in there, go in there, see what's going on. See going on. Um, um, yeah, D Hayes. Yeah, D Hayes. Let's try that. Let's try that. Oh, cracky. Oh, it might do the exact opposite. I'm like. <laughs> we can take it too, <laughs> far, take it too far, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's, if I do blend, if I do blend, blend them, them out, might be a lot of anyway. scores anyway. Um, um, yeah, I'm like, unless you uh, you want to try and paint them manually to try and highlight them. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. A bit, that's a bit too. <laughs> like if this was yeah, a fine art yeah. print and it was going to be the size of a wall, that might be something that you would do. Um, potentially, potentially, there might just be too might just be too faint to really get easily brought out. Easily brought out. That's the thing. Quite possibly, yeah. Um. Yeah, I think yeah. anything I, I think do around, I do here, around is here, here is going to start looking, start a, little looking a little bit strange. Yeah, it's kind of a hard balance to strike, isn't it? Because if you get it too dark, then it will look a bit unbalanced in terms of the photo. Yeah. You yeah. can't really push it too far either way, can you? One better if it is... One better if it is... These clouds near the horizon, clouds near the horizon are... Um, are um, Less, less, less bright. Less bright. So it may actually mean so going, actually a bit dark, going a bit darker. Too doesn't look too strange. Strange. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that now. Um, um, yeah, there's so much. Yeah, there's so much, much to do, really. To do, uh, really. I'm not going, uh, going for a look at my lens, lens, my lens corrections. Lens corrections. Um, um, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. It's I'm just like that might um remove out a little bit, out a little some bit. of that vignette effect that you've uh, applied. So might do. But then I can always then I can add, always, it in, add it in, add it in, add it in, add it in. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to leave that image there for now. It's um, nice. I really um, like that. Oh, no, it's just very nice. I think it's missing I think a subject, it's missing though. A subject I think, though. I think that's one of its problems. Yeah, it doesn't really have a focal point, does it? 
Uh, back to library. Back yeah, to library. Yeah, we're back to library. How are you doing? How are you doing? You got a photo? Oh, well, got a photo? I have a photo. Yes, and I'm playing around with trying to get it. Um, kind of. Uh, I know. Let me. Uh, let's swap over to my screen here. Here we go. So I've got this kind of dark picture of someone walking through the woods that we took uh, at a photosilk trip uh, end of last year and uh, just straight out of camera it's incredibly dark because it's exposed for the sunset in the distance mm. and we've got this very like rich colors coming through but what I want to do I want to try and use this to create something like this kind of glowing person uh, that Victoria Seam has done Seema, so oh yeah uh, so, what I'm trying to do initially is just to bring up all of the shadow details, just to try and see what's going on. Uh, now, I was playing around with raising up the blacks and the shadows, but I'm not sure that that's going to be enough. So, uh, just before we swapped to me, I was playing around with this tone curve, trying to get it a little bit lighter. But, I just really don't like the way it's looking. like. It's, it's very hard to get up, and uh, there's so much dark area, like I can uh, really push it, but then obviously we start to get loads and loads of noise. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to just uh, find a, a happy medium, for, try and bring out the details and the, the shadows without uh, destroying everything else. Mm. So, um, it's a bit of a tricky one. What I do is I'm going to try and keep the curves as straight as possible all the way down and then just try and modify them around the very bottom end. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. It is going to be very tricky because you start to get very weird colours if you uh, do too too much with, the, with curves. Uh, but if I couple that with editing the blacks and shadows, I might be able to get somewhere. It is a bit of a in the butt actually. I'm trying to think if there's another way to do it. Maybe I could just paint in an exposure correction. If I reset my curve to zero, I do something similar to what you were doing with a brush earlier. And I'm just gonna whack up the exposure so we can actually see what's going on. And then come in with an ex a brush, adjustment brush here. And uh, paint in the area that I want. To be a bit darker and uh, play around with it that way. There we go. Go around all of these trees and things. Maybe that will work? It's very hard to judge because what I'm going to do up to this photo after I've got it kind of exposed is going to change it quite radically as well. So, yeah. What if I just like get this kind of large wide brush going like that and come back in here with an eraser <sighs> yeah it's hard to it's hard to tell um, maybe what I'll do I'm gonna create maybe I'll create two different versions of the picture in Lightroom one which is very light one is very dark and then just take them both into Photoshop and try and edit in in there instead because I think this is going to be quite yeah tricky. the um your subject in there I was looking at the um photos from um the inspiration photos and are you actually looking to resolve detail in the in the person or are you looking to um just have them white maybe yeah we're looking to have them white at the end I think um like so we don't necessarily need detail in the person but I want to be able to see enough of the leaf litter and stuff at the bottom of this so that I can paint right. in like a, a gleaming white glow around okay, the it. person, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 I get it now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a feature in Lightroom called Virtual Copy and create two copies of this picture, one of which gives me the, uh, the darkness of the picture and one of which gives me, effectively, I'll create a version of what it looks like if the person wasn't there and then a version of the person lighting up the entire scene as a white kind of light, if you get yeah. what I mean. Um, yeah. So this virtual copy, uh, you can right click on any picture in Lightroom and create a, a copy of it. 
uh, and it doesn't create an actual copy of the file, it creates a copy of it virtually so that you can apply different edits. Uh, and I use this all the time, especially if, um, if I'm sending photos to someone and I have multiple edits that I want to show them, I'll create a whole load of different uh, virtual copies and then uh, send them a selection. And um, it does give you a lot of options, which is nice. So uh, I'm going to really push this up, really push up the exposure, like four, four stops is quite a lot. But I think for this it'll be fine. And what I'm going to do is, you can see how incredibly noisy this is now, because it was taken at night, more or less. And uh, we've just massively boosted the bright brightness of it. I'm going to come in and just do very, very, very heavy noise reduction. Yeah, I um, think once you've got the, the sort of glow from uh, the subject that's going to end up being there, the actual quality of the image isn't going to be you know, that's not the main attention draw, so I think you'll get away with a little less than ideal quality. Yeah, and also, um, I'm like, depending on the edits that we do, I might have to reapply noise onto the edits to make it match the photo anyway. So, um, we'll, we'll play around with that afterwards as well. Um, we just compare after, before and after the noise, that's already a massive difference. As you guys can see, like, this is a very noisy picture if it doesn't have any noise suppression in it straight out of camera um out of interest this was uh 12,800 iso wow so it does pretty good considering um yeah like rewind five years and you probably can i'm like you wouldn't want to use a, a photo from a camera that's that high iso but on this we can get away with it thankfully so, um, we've got our light version then, and um, let's just see what happens as we play with some of these other sliders, because we think about what are the properties of lighting something up. In the, in the process of lighting something up, you not only make it brighter, but you give it more contrast and stuff. So what I think I'm going to do for my lit up picture I'm going to increase the contrast and things now so that we get the feeling of having a brighter light on something that the contrast is higher on it. Um, mm. You also lose saturation usually, I think. Yes, so um, that's a very good point. I'll, uh, I'll pull down the saturation just a tad. You know, actually, I think I'll, um, I'll take down the bright vibrance instead. Um, We'll still have some colour, but um, it's almost washing out the colours in a way that makes them less vibrant. Is kind of what where my head is with that. Just yeah. Yeah. Um, um... yeah. Let's see. Uh, clarity is not going to help us there. I don't think it might do, but uh, I'm going to put a little bit of clarity in because I think it's going to really, really highlight the areas that are, are being lit by a person here. Um, so that's our lit picture. Mm -hmm. And this is our dark picture, which I'm just going to bring in a little bit of light to, so that we can see what's going on just a tad, so we can get some of the context without the noise that we did in the other picture. go and uh, I'm gonna take out the vibrance a little bit more on the other picture I think you can just about see what's going on there yeah there we go so now I've got my two photos so before and after I'm going to bring those into Photoshop and uh, while I do that, Sam, what are you up to? I oh, was just messing around with some, uh, uh, yeah, some photos. Of sort of yeah, some photos. Sort of really, more of a really. Um, really. Um, so, yeah, so, I was messing around with this edit. Yeah, I was just messing around with this edit. Ooh. It looks more similar to that sort it of thing. More similar to that sort oh, of thing. Oh wow, that's quite <laughs> a difference. <laughs> what have you What have you done there? Is that a uh, 
I've mainly fake, fake, I've mainly fake, 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 so yeah, before it was more, so, yeah, more like before this, it was more, more like this. just tweaking the uh, just tweaking the saturation the, up, like the up channel, saturation up really the channel also increase the really contrast also increase the contrast interesting. Um, but yeah, let's go back to but yeah, let's go back to something else. Something oh, my else. Slow computer workloads. Slow computer workloads. <laughs> and uh, right. and all uh, got that issue at the moment. My computer seems to be going slower and slower the more I use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so just edited that one. So just edited um, that one. Um, I think I'm gonna go and I try. I'm gonna go and try one of one of. Where is I? I had a photo just saying. I had a photo just saying. Yeah. Ah. Oh yeah, one of these ones. Oh yeah, one of these ones. This one's actually Ooh, got a subject. This one's actually got a subject um, in it. Um. I like the uh, the disappearing focus on that a lot. I like how it just. I'm like, it's a very. Um, a lot of people use that effect, like vanishing points and distances, is just nice to take pictures of. But I really, yeah, I like that a lot. I think it could do with some reframing. I think it could do with some um, reframing. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. Else, I'm like, you could almost do um, what that's you did with the photo a couple of weeks ago and make it just almost a letterbox. Lesbos could be good or Lesbos like be a good square or crop. like a square a crop. A square crop miles of work, yeah. Let's try it. Let's just let's, let's just, try it. Let's yeah, just I'm intrigued. Do it. Do it. I'm also thinking black and white again. I'm also thinking black and white again. I'm just going to actually use one of the um, presets quickly. Presets, do some crops. Quickly, 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 and we'll see where we're at. Crops, and we'll see where we're at, hmm. I think. So there, yeah. Instantly, so there, yeah. Very instantly we've got some very interesting things. You know, these black and white split tones. You know, these black and white split tones are quite interesting. Oh no, I oh I really like that actually. The split tones on the black and white. That is. I think I might. That's I think nice. I, might, I really like that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I yeah, think I'm gonna, going through how to create that. Go through how to create that from scratch. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And along with. Along, along with, with some along cropping, with some and cropping. And uh, so I'm going to start with my uh, stand sort of thing. Um, sort of thing. I'll go um, in. And do I'll go in and do a little bit of sharpening. A little bit of sharpening. And then also a and then also lens a corrections. Lens so corrections. removing chromatic aberration. So removing chromatic aberration. Get the little colours out of the way. Get the little colours um, out of the way. Um, um, enable lens. And enable lens So we've now collection. got a. So we've now got a an image that is an image that is as good as it's going to be. As good as it's going to be. Technically. Um, we've got some good sharpness. We've got some good sharpness. Noise, 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 noise production. Noise, noise production. There's barely any there anyway. There's barely any there anyway. We don't want it starting looking a bit. We don't want it starting looking a bit like. I don't know. Like smush don't know. or something. <laughs> smush. Or yeah, something. it does look um, a little bit like it's been um, painted. If you put too much noise correction in. Should we do it? Should we try it? Should we do it? Should we try it? Should we see this on Oh, I think we will. We've got a pretty decent feed. Okay. Okay. Noise reduction. Reduce the detail. Reduce the detail. Um, yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. It does look like it does look like someone did. Someone did. It just ends up looking like a film. It just ends up looking like a cheap iPhone. iPhone and some cheap iPhone. Yeah, it does. It does look like. So, like. so none of that, please. None of that, please. No noise reduction. No noise and reduction. Wait. Um, finishes loading. There we go. Back finishes all. loading. There we go. Back. To um. <clears> um. <throat> yeah. So. Yeah. So. Let's try. Let's try. I will try and crop it in. I will bit. try and crop yeah. it in a little bit. Mm. Uh, now that was my idea for a, like. A now that was my idea for a, like a square. Very good. Very good. Maybe a. Maybe a. Let's try to. Let's try to. Kind of nice. Might look kind of nice. We brought in a little bit. We brought in a little bit. It's weird. I, I feel like I weird. should have stepped like back, back and round. So this, back and round. This, so I, this, this length was this length wider in the photo. Wider in the photo. That makes yeah, more no, flat on to the, more flat on to the... Yeah, I, I actually probably would have gone the other way. <laughs> I know. You gone, oh, yeah, you gone, no. oh, yeah, I don't know. There's, a, there's loads of different like, ways that you can go with like, that kind of... It just doesn't feel that balanced, it really. Feel that thing. balance, really. That thing. What I often do as well is what I often do as well is you can just look at the crop. You can just look at the crop. So I'm actually often looking at the little navigator preview when I do a crop. 
uh, when I do a crop. I find it a little bit easier just I to find get a proper sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I do that a lot. Um, it is very handy. And also, top left. And also, and when analysing, and when analysing an image, image, composition of um, an image, it's, kind of, it's um, nice to have kind of, of, like step nice back, look at things. Step back, look at things. Um, um, yeah, none of these compositions yeah, need work. None of these I'm compositions gonna go need to work. I'm going to go less box, I think. And just get this whole. And just get this whole. Thing for all. Keep that thing go keep crazy go, and go different. Crazy and go different. I think the main thing is. I think the main thing is. This buggy mirror is the closest posts on closest posts on in focus. Yeah, it kind of goes in and out, doesn't it? I got something else. I got, I got something else where I did do something else where I did do correctly. I took the photo correctly. <laughs> That was, that this is what I find I've been doing. I've been pulling out older photos that aren't necessarily perfect technically, but do provide a, a good base for something. Yeah, yeah. Like, something that I've I have been doing a bit recently because you can actually do quite a lot with them. And um, if you're doing something like Photoshop, if you're thinking of something creative in Photoshop, it the likelihood of your your viewer being drawn to whatever you're doing. Photoshop wise, rather than uh, technical errors in the photo, is a lot higher. Yeah, you can get away with a lot. Yeah, you, you can, can get away with a lot. Away with it a lot more. Like, um, you know, you, you can if you freeze frames of stuff like um, CGI movies, you can spot all kinds of weird mistakes. But it's all covered by the fact that there's there's movement or there's something that's drawing your eye. And mm. uh, it's the same mm. thing here, really. So I'm gonna go for a crop. So I'm gonna like go this. for a crop. I've actually changed image now. I've actually changed image now. Um, well, we'll start well, doing the. Um, we'll start doing the. Um, it. So essentially, it. so essentially, we make it very easy. We make it very easy because we have a split turning tab. Split turning tab, which makes it very, which makes it very easy to do. Um, easy to do. Um, so split turning is essentially. So split turning is essentially get, uh, tinting, get uh, tinting um, parts of the image based um, on parts of the image based on the luminance, I guess. So I guess you can you can. Uh, you can, uh, you can get, get. Sorry, uh, you can, um, uh, you can, you can um, different areas. You can and it different sort of areas. comes and it from, sort of comes um, from. Um, sorry, Tom, just sorry. look on the. Tom, just um, look on the the, um, the group. They might have a tech issue. issue. They might have a tech um, issue. Um, not a major one, but not a major one. Um, um, yeah, so split turning yeah, comes so from. Split turning comes from. A sort of like a sort of cross processing with film. So often with film and color, you got these um, different chemistry would affect um, lighter parts and darker parts of the image, um, and you call it a cross processing, or now you call it split toning. So if I, so I can do it on a colored image, um, and what you often get is sort of a um, a warm tint to the highlights, and then a cold blue tint to the shadows. Mm. I bring that in now. We get this. We very quickly get towards a sort of film look. <laughs> and it's essentially a, a, uh, a failed film look because it's it's what happens when your chemistry goes bad. Um, but, but people hey, love it now. It's, it's Instagram hard now. Looks like it. Yeah, um, we can go a bit crazy with it. Yeah. Then also, yeah, that's on a color photo. I think if I reduce the saturation, yeah. So we so the saturation is obviously beneath this these adjustments. If I reduce that saturation down, we can um, then the only color we've got is this split turning, which is a very nice abstract look actually, because we've got this nice subject in the in the the darker shades, and then the the the, the, the skies and the lighter, which is then in a, obviously a different shade of like this orangey green I've got right now. Mm. Um, oh, my orange and nice... blue is the classic um, like superhero movie or you know color grade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, and we've got this nice, um, this nice gradient on the left now. I actually quite like how we've now got this. We're accentuating this part of the horizon now. So I actually now try a recrop. I quite like the length it gives us. Uh, makes sense. So I might focus on something like this, a crop like this. So I like how now with this image. From the left to right, we've sort of got this one line, which then becomes a subject, and it's highlighted by this bit toning. Yeah.
I wonder if I bring in a bit of the original color. Hmm. Oh man, I was trying to do something and now my Photoshop is completely frozen. This is not good. <laughs> oh no. Mm. All kinds of problems all the time. Yeah. It's still processing or something. Oh. I do like that. I'm, really, I, I'm loving I, that color. I, I really like that. The way that that color is going of, out on those posts is is lovely. It's kind of giving it a false, really nice sunset look. I think. Is yeah, it doing. is, isn't it? Like because it's making the. Um, yeah. That's really. I really, really like that. Actually, you could get all kinds of awesome effects with split toning. You know, I don't try it nearly enough, but um, it is. It is fantastic. I really like. The it definitely gives in more interest in the photo. Yeah. It creates more of a divide. I mean, I look at that and I feel like, I don't know. I think like a high vibe. I might, I might actually do what you, what you were saying and do um, this, uh, what do you put it, like a false, like a fake, uh, what is it called, like an edit, so we can edit the same image, image twice. Oh, a virtual copy. Yeah. Yeah, virtual copy. Those are um, amazing. Those. That, I... Oh man, I really, really like that edit. <laughs> That's really nice. That's the kind of thing that people, you know, not not without uh, it, it. It's got like uh, commercial photography, like that you would sell for prints to like home stores or something. To, was... If you know what I mean, like you know, if you go into like, uh, I'm trying to think of like, if you go to like John Lewis or like. Uh, home sense or something, and you go and buy a print. That's the kind of thing that I can imagine. Or like the the, the print section at IKEA. You know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. In a good way, Absolutely. not in a bad way. Like some people might take <laughs> yeah, it in a bad way. Need to take that the right way because they don't always have a very good taste in wall art. <laughs> they don't. It's true, but you know, I can imagine somebody going, "Oh, that looks nice," and then just not replacing the the thing in the frame, and going, "Oh, look, I'm just going to keep this." Or like at a, um, uh, if it's got enough of like the um, corporate color in it, that can just be like a hotel room yep. image. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Over the bed. <laughs> yeah. You know. Like welcome to. Well, no, 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 it would be it would be at like some local thing. So it would be like a a sport in the UK or something. Like that is known for that feature on its beaches. And they right. would have that in the rooms. This is getting very specific. Yeah, this we need to like... hypothetical situation. <laughs> we need to like... What? Sorry? No, this, like, have a conversation between us. It's like, design the best hotel room. <laughs> we get the Microsoft Paint... Uh, Microsoft paint out and uh, start uh, like designing hotel rooms in just boxes and stuff. Can you got... do like photo edits on paint? Is that like a really bad? Oh my challenge? days! That would be a. I mean, the thing is, is that you could do it amazingly if you have opacity control. If you don't have opacity control, then probably you don't not. have layers thing. Yeah, you don't have layers. Uh, so, but if you had opacity control, you could at least. Um, like burn in and things uh yeah like you could do edits slowly i've actually got I've, I've, you've, you've interested me I'm, I'm gonna open up paint and just have a look <laughs> oh it's very <laughs> very good. laggy on the on this computer right now <laughs> um, and that was the photoshop live stream went downhill and <laughs> we decided to edit in paint <laughs> well there's a Okay, so there's a paintbrush tool, which isn't completely transparent, but you don't have control over size, thickness, or anything. Uh, we've got a a spray can, but that is like solid. Like, isn't that like, I remember, I remember the old paint was like, it would do pixels. Oh you man, know, like you could actually, pixel. if you have a high res enough pic picture, you could definitely use the spray can to do some edits. <laughs> um, it would be horrible, but you could. Um, oh, anyway. man. We should not do that. That well. would be an absolute nightmare. Um, 
Yeah. So I've, I've now created a virtual copy. So nice. I've got the edit I've just done. And I'm now going to try and sort of find a similar sort of edit, but within I'm actually, oh, I reset everything. I might keep the crop though for now. So I'm just going to go um, develop settings, copy settings, settings, just the crop. Yeah, copy. And then paste it back onto my virtual copy. Um, do, do, do. So now I've got the photo that's blank apart from the crop. Hmm. And I, I want to try and. This separation we got was quite nice in the last one. We did that through split toning. I want to try and just do it with vibrance essentially now. Um, oh, okay. One thing I've, I've, I've been able to do in the past is a call. An idea where you sort of like do the make the vibrance almost maximum, and then you turn down the saturation a little bit. Oh gosh, that sounds like something that I would do by accident, and then realise that it might look good. But I don't ever recall actually doing that on purpose. <laughs> what does it look like? Opposite. I'm intrigued. Um, you can get some interesting effects. It's it's not. I don't know the technicalities on how vibrance and saturation work enough to know. Well, I think what but. um, what I think you'd be doing, as a guess, is I reckon so vibrance. Obviously, um, when you look at colors and stuff like Photoshop, you can specify by hue, saturation, and lightness. So saturation will just change how rich a color is. I reckon vibrance changes the saturation and also nudges the hue towards one of the primary colors or a or secondary color so it okay brings, so it nudges it towards the richness i'm not sure about that I, i'm intrigued about how the vibrance actually if you look it. at the um it's interesting you saying that because if you look at the histogram at the top here hmm. make it bigger she's not naming um and I, and I changed my you can sort of see how the peaks diverge the peaks of color diverge as Looking here, mm. I increase vibrance and peaks are like you know, apart. So I wonder if it's dragging each of those hues towards yeah, a because if you I know that if you do an over, over overt amount of vi vibrance, uh, your photo can start to look like it's just uh, made out of like primary colors of paint that someone's just slapped on a piece of you know canvas or something. Hmm. Just like if you do a bad HDR. <laughs> yeah. I think I might just try doing selective saturation. Hmm. Well, you're missing some very skillful painting of my white glowing person on this side. <laughs> Let's go and have a look then. I'm like my... Uh, my Photoshop crashed, so I've had to restart, and I'd already been doing some work on it. But effectively, what I've done is I've just got a new layer, and uh, I've got out my. This is very much cheating, I think. Uh, I've got out my graphics tablet, and I'm painting with that. Um, <laughs> that's not cheating. That's just using the tools you got. Yeah, I know, but you know, if this is meant to be, uh, this is very much doable with a mouse. It's just that I've chosen to use this because uh, <laughs> I know. It's a little bit nicer to use. There we go. It's kind of hard to follow the outline of this person because they're so noisy that it's mm -hmm. hard to judge at points like, for example, their elbows. Whereabouts their elbows are. What I might do is I might modify the outline a bit when I finish it to make it look a bit more like a person. Yeah. Just smooth it up a bit. Um, now, what you can do when you're using the brush in Photoshop, you can um, use a tool called smoothing. And what that does is you can see this pink line following my brush around. It allows you to smooth out any jittery movements that you might make with your mouse or with whatever tools you're using. So in my case, it's my hand on my tablet. And uh, there we go. It gives you a very, very smooth input that allows you to generally get something in the first try. 
I've also got our pressure sensitivity turned on, so that's controlling the size of my line here. So I can just press a little bit harder, get a bigger brush. And as I trace the very edges of this stuff, I'm using quite a small brush, so I'm quite light on pressure. There we go. Mm. And, uh, no. I'm not an illustrator, so I cannot claim to be amazing at using a tablet, but I do use it for some work. And it is, it's a very nice experience. Hmm. This thing only cost me like 20 quid. <laughs> it's very cheap. You can tell it's slightly bent, which means that it's more or less impossible to draw a, uh, a straight line on it. Like one of the corners is warped. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, I got it like eight years ago and I don't use it enough to justify buying a fancy one. So, you know. Well, it's great for this then. Yeah, exactly. You know, rough and ready edits, that's that's fine. Often I go back in and clean it back up afterwards anyway, so... Yeah. Also, once we add a glow to this, this is how rough my paint job will be uh, is less of a factor. Yeah. Because that will just kind of smooth out all of our edges. Okay. Some weird looking feet going on here. <laughs> I would say I'm not an artist, but I did take a little art. And uh, I did do a lot of painting, although not on a computer. But actually, I have started painting again recently. Like, one of these things about having so much extra time, or at least having more, a bit more energy to do something creative. Um, I've been doing loads more creative stuff beyond just photography recently, mm. which is quite nice. Um, as well, yesterday I ended up uh, doing some painting, which was fun. There we go. Cool. This looks very odd. Uh, what do you think about this kind of outline that we've got going on? Like, it's I think it's to always the look odd. Yeah, uh, it's. I think once you've got the glow and things going, it all it will sort of become part of the image. I think it's sort of a mixture of an outline you're not too familiar with, maybe. Um, and, it, and it looks very out of place right now. But once you've added blowing things, it'll start falling into place, I think. Very true, very true. Just realized that I've missed some of the, uh, the like jacket that this person's got on. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. Right, and then I think I've added a little bit too much on his on their leg here. Like it looks like a weird kind of growth. I think it should more or less just go straight down instead. So uh, let's swap over to the eraser. And uh, oh dear, that's uh, make that a bit harder. Okay. Harder and smaller. Ooh. Oh dear. Harder, smaller, and there we go. Just moving on. This is the one thing of using a tablet, you do have to set up your brush right. And if you swap around a lot and don't set up your own brushes, it can take longer than you think. Uh, there we go. Right. Uh, now one of their legs looks bigger than the other. Which is partially just because in the photo it is. <laughs> um, and they've got their hood up, which I guess is fine. Um, it's a bit more of an edge on that hood than... Let's, uh, let's just modify this a little bit. Use a very, very light pressure. Oh, just to trim it down a bit. There we go.
it is a little bit weird um, moving your hand down on like the desk and having something move around on the screen. Like, obviously, the ideal way to do something like this is to have a touch screen or something mm. incredibly expensive, which kind of combines the two, <laughs> like a big old Wacom um, Wacom screen. But uh, yeah, Wacom Cintiq thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not which are great to use. I mean, I've, I've I've used those for ages. Um, but I mean, you can do. You can get used to used to it. Yeah, I'm like, I am. Yeah, I'm slowly getting used to it. How since I've been getting some practice in over the last few weeks. Right there we go. So we've got this kind of white glowing person walking through the woods. <laughs> well, you've got an outline of a person. They're not glowing quite yet. Uh, mm. I'm going to double click on this layer, bring up my layer style, and start playing around with some glows, an outer glow. Now, I wonder how uniform it should be. Let's have a look at which tour is um, example. It almost looks like she's uh, just done her glow and then gone back in and uh, edited it so that it doesn't glow uniformly all the way around. Like the person, the glowing person's feet like disappear into the snow in her picture, so she's cut off the glow as it goes into the snow and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think there's some little details that we can add that might. Um, it also might looks like to... a a more glow on the edge on on either side versus the top. Yeah, it's almost like what she's actually done is blurred. Yeah, it's probably a, a mixture. She's probably got a mixture of yeah. three or four layers doing a few things and also some there's some lens effects in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm like we've got some lens flares and stuff which I might play around with in a in a bit. Um, I'm gonna create a copy of my layer and I'm gonna try doing a little bit of a blur. Um, so let's go and go to the filter and go to what's going to be the best one here. Blur. Um, you know what? I'm going to try a motion blur. Now, what this allows you to do is pick a angle that the motion is traveling in and uh, blur selectively. Um, there we go. Bye. Right. Oh, it almost looks a bit weird and ghosty. Um, like, that's very odd. Mm. Now you could combine that though, and that would start to look quite interesting. So we're gonna do a little bit of a blur horizontally, like that. I'm gonna create another layer and just have a look at what Gaussian blur looks like. So that's our other option, I think, for this. Go to blur filter again, pick Gaussian blur. Hmm. Okay. Let's see the difference there. I wonder if the two would together work. Like the Gaussian blur looks very uniform and bland by itself but with the mm. uh, the motion blur back and forth it starts I think that's to look sort like of great, something yeah and then what if i then on the original layer add a little bit of a glow just to soften up the edges oh okay now that that yeah that's definitely starting to get somewhere actually um Yeah, I think you might actually need some more light in the background. Yeah, so I uh, currently got the dark background up. Uh, I've got the light background as a hidden layer right now, and I'm going to come back and then paint. Are you thinking of having light going on to sort of the deep background, to the trees behind, almost, or yeah, just so, on to? Um, I think it's going to be quite a light, quite a heavy fall off in terms of how far the light spreads. But I'm just going to mm. like effectively paint in the light as kind of highlights on the appropriate sides of objects and things and see what it looks like. Um, yeah. I just want to think I really like that glow effect actually. So that's a combination of 
a, a layer of Gaussian blur, a layer of um, motion blur, and then a little bit of uh, outer glow. It's all white, and um, actually, um, what uh, Seema's done in hers is she's introduced a little bit of colour into the glow. So she's got an orange, uh, she's got a blue glow in hers. Because obviously, um, so if you think about something that is giving off light, the actual light emitting surface is frequently very, very bright. So much so that it appears as pure white. But as the light falls off and you get, kind of get a glow around the light source, you'll get the colour of the light as well. So I wonder if I should just introduce a little bit of a, a kind of tint. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering what colour it should be though. I wonder if I can... I, I could try and match it to the sunset in the distance. Or I could try something else. Yeah, I think you need to think about the your colour palette you're using. Because she has used sort of a very cool blue. But you've already got the sunset going, so I think... Yeah, I don't think the blue works. I think I'm going to go with a... I'm going to sample a colour from the uh, that sunset. So uh, I hit I to bring up my colour picker. And uh, let's pick that one. I'm going to double click on the colour. I'm going to copy this and apply it to the glow. So are you working on... Yeah, that's just so, your effects on the layer. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So let's apply that. Um, now you can start playing around with the size of it. I, want, I don't think it should be too big. Like, just... Because we've got that orange coming off of it. The area on either side now looks very cold. Can you see that on stream? You might not be able to, but if let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Wait, on the um, person, the white of the person themselves, you mean? No, like the, the extra glow around the edge of them now looks bluer. Oh yeah, yeah I get that, yeah. Uh, which is a bit, a bit odd. What if I do another, so I'm going to copy this layer style, right click on the layer and copy it, and then I'm going to select my other layer and put a glow on that as well, and then just yeah. pull down the, uh, the visibility on it a lot, see what it looks like. I throw it onto color, so it will just apply the color to our layer. Now copy that again and apply it to the other blur layer. Does that work, do you think? I don't know if uh, having a colour glow works at all, to be honest, but... I think you will need the colour glow in there. Maybe we could modulate the colour just slightly across those layers, so the glow is slightly different, like... Hues. We we'll just shift mm. the hue slightly more towards like that, a yellow of a sunset for one of the layers and that kind of thing. And then spread it a bit further. Hmm. I think that will work quite well, actually. I'm quite liking. Uh, I'm liking that. You got any thoughts? Yeah. I think start maybe looking at rather the um, the light other still. Elements. Yeah. Yeah, and then come back to if it still feels not perfect. But I think it's yeah. Once you start doing other things, it'll start to feel part of the image. Yeah. True. Cool. Uh, what yeah, are you good. up to right now? Do you want to stay with mine, or do you want to have a, a little bit of life? Get some nice. Get some What are you What are you currently lo looking at? So I just want to show you um, this image. 
Um, so this is an edit so far I've done it. But this is, if we look at the sliders, this is the sort of edit I was talking about. So this is, I've literally got vibrant up to almost maximum. And I've dropped the saturation down a little bit. But doing that, Ooh, I see. It, kind of, it kind of brings in the color more where there's less of it, is how I seem to think of it. Do you know what that is equivalent to, to me? That looks the same as selectively rising, raising the um, the saturation on the individual colors. It looks like a yeah. similar effect, just for this image that is. Um, yeah, it seems to sort of even out the amount of colour in different areas in a way that just doing, so if I just did saturation, we sort of get an overwhelming boost to, to, the, to the already light areas. And I feel like just doing this sort of an edit evens out the colour in a way. Hmm. So that's my starting point anyway. Um, and I was just thinking of, is there a, a crop that's necessary? I feel like it's slightly skewed. So I'm going to rectify that. But really, it's kind of okay. Um, I might increase the clarity in the sky. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to drop in a graduated filter. It's got sort of like a nice moody sky. It probably handled quite a lot of editing. I'm also going to add another one in and play around with the lightness a bit, I think. It's got it's got potential for some really nice depth in this image. I feel. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Especially depth of like the depth of the color that you could bring out, like the real richness of that. That sky is a. Uh... Yeah, definitely. Also, got quite an interesting like bits of yellows in that sky as well. Like, I wonder if you might be able to like. Yeah, I'm just seeing yellows a bit. Wow. Well. I could even could even tint things. A bit crazy. Ooh. Too crazy. There's enough colour. There's enough good colour there anyway. Try these yellows we're talking about. Yeah, there's not much color information left in that area, though. It does look yellow, but I think it's more the sky around it looks blue. It's a bit of an illusion, really. Yeah, it might be. Well, might 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 be a neutral gray, actually. That kind of thing. Um, it's a good point. Yeah. Let's mess around with actual the global. Um, future comes to life. The global sort of white balance, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Um, trying the white balance across would. Uh, we've actually got some rays going on there. If you see in that that yellow patch on the left hand side, there are some rays going on. Yeah, very faintly. Yeah. Hmm. That's a bit weird, isn't it? What is, what is Adobe think? So auto. Well, that's what Adobe thinks. Mm. So I had it very blue. I much prefer the blue, though. I think I prefer that a lot. Yeah. Although I might try 
my my gradient. Adobe Auto is generally quite good, and uh, you know it's a good starting point for edits as well. Like you can hit Auto and see what Adobe thinks it sh the edit would be. But um, generally I, I don't stick with it. <laughs> it's just me. Actually, then I've got a very different edit looking now. saturated now. There's the vibrance. Because that's probably more realistic now. What I've got going now, it's probably more realistic edit. Yeah, I don't like it so much though. That that blue was real a, a real strength, I think. Like I, I like that blue. That's just me though, you know. <laughs> I don't don't mind adding some level of fantastical, like fan, fantasy editing or something to my pictures. Uh, Let's go back to as shot then. Yeah. I think I'll stick with a slightly, slightly blue tint. That sky. Something else now. Hmm. While you're looking at that, I'm going to update on everybody on what I'm not to. <laughs> okay. Um, we have now entered some interesting edits. Um, so what I've been doing is uh, just applying a little bit of painting to our... So this is our original light picture, and then I've been uh, doing some painting to try and get areas that would be lit up sorted. So I've just been making a little bit of progress with that. We've got a little bit in the trees, a little bit on this log. But I realised um, this is all being lit up effectively as a lighter version of the ground. Uh, or the original colour it was. But it's going to have a slight tint because of the tint of the person and how it affects the lighting. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a pure orange layer and I'm going to create a gradient. So uh, let me flip that around um, and create gradient and use that as a modifier on the, um, the layer below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to uh, color, I think. Yeah, I'm going to set it to color so whatever on our layer below gets applied there. And that is a really strong effect, and then I'm going to slowly pull down the opacity and uh, see what we can do. A very subtle effect, but it means that there's not a, a weird blueness coming into the light coming out of our walker in the forest. I think mm. that works quite well. Yeah. See, I think that subject is now feeling more, um, fitting in more as well, actually. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some still still some bits to be done. Um, I'm like, um, if I just get rid of our layer mask here for a second. Um, we'll get rid of that and uh, just go back to this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in some more orange. Just with a brush because it's not quite a uniform circle the light's coming out of this figure it's more of a uh, kind of oval so i'm just going to come in here like this and just trim this down i'll be amazed if i finish this before the end. Like, at <laughs> this rate, it's going to take me ages. Um, You're doing quite good, though. 
Yeah. Definitely getting somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Um. I know it definitely looks like a person walking along, like just in the, on this background. It definitely works. Um. Hmm. So I'm gonna go with that, and then uh, go back to the blending mode we're on, which is color. Re-add our clipping mask. And uh, actually, you know what? I almost don't need to apply a clipping mask to it because that color effect would affect the entire picture. Actually, no. Wait, we should uh, we should leave it on. Um, so about twenty percent seems to work quite well. Just to add a little bit of that warmth back in. Um, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to paint in the light on our this tree stump here. So that's a very big brush. So let's uh, let's do this. So I'm going to go quite low opacity, and uh, on our layer mask, just come in and paint this in. Oh, that's in black. It needs to be in white. Let's paint it in white. I'm going to come back and tidy the edge on this in a minute, but... Okay. I almost feel like it's not strong enough effect, actually, this. I feel like it maybe should be lit up a little bit more, but we can come back in. Play around with that a little bit. Where else does this lead? It leads up there. So let's uh, there we go. Lighting going on there. It's got a bit of lighting going on that. Right, and then I'm going to come back in with a black brush that's a bit harder and uh, trim up the edge of that. I think let's make that a little bit harder and then take the opacity up. Go. Also, there's a little bit of this which is like, I'm currently looking at this on quite a large monitor. When it's viewed on a phone screen, <laughs> uh, how much can I get away with? Again, we're saying about um, you know, tearing it for the, the voters or whatever. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, that's a good point. No, I completely forgot to put up the, uh, the pictures from last week onto the Instagram for people to vote on. So everybody gets double the votes this week. <laughs> <laughs> Got too caught up in, I, I would say life, but um, there's not much life going on at the moment. I think I might try one of these geometric edits. I've Good shout, yeah, photos why not? That, that might work from. Gonna, I'm gonna do this with a mouse actually, here we go. Mm. It's working, isn't it? It's definitely working. Your selective, your selective painting. Yeah, it's definitely working. I feel like I need to trim up the, the lighting balance a little bit because the lighting balance isn't quite there. It does feel like it's lit up more one side than the other. Um, we can fix that fairly quickly, I think. Oh, I like. I, I see what you're doing over there, and I'm, I'm intrigued to see what you're about to do with that. So am I. 
I'll, uh, you want to switch over? Yeah, or? we'll swap. Well, actually, over. no. I need to. I need to start Photoshop. Let's, okay. let's start Photoshop. You, you start. You start Photoshop, and then uh, we'll swap over once you've got that out. We'll see how long that takes. <laughs> We're going to a really, really low opacity brush and just paint in a little bit more light. Here. I feel like, um, I know, I don't necessarily need to have accurate light coming out of this thing, so long as it gives the right, the same impression, the right impression. Like, what I might do is paint in a little bit of the light of the path that leads to, um, the sunset. Just so that's lit up a little bit more, so that it kind of leads your your eye off. Hmm. I mean, you could also you could Photoshop in as if the sunset was lighting through. You know, in a, in a way. Well, it kind of already. I'm like, kind of already is. You know, that's what should be captured in the photo, really. But it, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, we could add an extra layer and go. You know. Let's just grab our an orange brush and just paint in the what a a kind of streak of light coming from that sunset might look like laying across the ground like that. Very, very roughly. And then if we did uh, soft light I'm like it's going to be very hard to paint in I think that one good shout though I'm intrigued to see what this look, this mask looks like that's what our mask currently looks like <laughs> it's a bit odd isn't it let's uh, let's make that a little bit more uniform mm. Um, that is not what we want. Yeah, Photoshop doesn't want to work on me. <laughs> oh no! It's, uh, so I'm trying to close as many programs as possible. <laughs> and hopefully it'll let me. Go super, super low opacity and just bring in a little bit more light here. Hmm. I, quite, I, I think I'm liking the lighting. The lighting on that is something I'm happy with. I'm not going to play around with that too much more. Okay. Hmm. I might add some other effects. How are you looking on yours? Are you having issues? I'm having issues with Photoshop. It doesn't. Oh, I can it see. Doesn't uh, like work, it doesn't like working in a low memory environment. Ah. Have you tried downloading some more RAM? <laughs> I know that's. Not, not yet. So, really. <laughs> um, I'm do. Cool. So I'm going to take all of these layers, make a copy of them, and just throw them all together and merge all of them. I'm going to try putting some lens flares in because this isn't enough like a J.J. Abrams movie yet. <laughs> oh, 
I see. I see what she's done. I think what she's actually done is she's um she's done that flare herself because that's a that's not a lens that's not a normal lens flare. That is a effectively simulating an anamorphic lens flare. When you do a lens flare, does it just put it into a layer, or you have to do it layer? on you have to do it on the layer? Uh, Oh, really? Yeah, you I can't. Think do. You can't just create a, a layer and do it on. Well, no, I just tried doing it on a blank layer and it doesn't do anything. Oh. That's what nice. I think I'm going to do is I'm going to manually create a lens flare, which sounds like madness. Whoops, a daisy, that is the wrong button. There we go. I'm too used to being able to press my uh, num keys to control things in Photoshop. But I cannot. Right, so I'm going to draw a rectangle of the vague location where I want this flare. So I'm going to do that. And then inside the rectangle, I'm going to do a radiant, I think. So. Currently. So what I'm going to do instead yeah. is, because um, I can't get Photoshop working, I'm going to try Photopia. Ah, OK. Which is a way of doing the problem. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's switch over to me. Actually. Yeah, absolutely. I Let's hop over to Sam. I don't know how long some of these things are going to take. However, so I've got this image I took um, again, like a year ago, um, of the sunset in a building, and I'm going to try some geometricy kaleidoscope type things. I think there's some nice colours in there that are going to work quite well. Um, and as far as this image goes, I might just bring up exposure a little bit. It's quite nice as it's dark though. Um, I just, yeah, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity maybe. Um, and essentially, it's ready to go. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see what it looks like in kaleidoscope or something. So mm. let's go. So we're done with that. Go back to the library. And I'm going to. Um, Export. <laughs> Let's call it um just stream. The original title. <laughs> Honestly, no way. I, I've been doing the exact same thing with all of the edits that we've been doing on stream. Like, and so now I should be able to go and just open an open a image. This is so weird. The way the way this works so well. It is it is amazing, isn't it? And then we have it. We have a cool. So let's see what Photopia can do. I've not got loads of experience with it, but I know like Photoshop. It's it, very similar to Photoshop, you know. It's, it is a direct copy of Photoshop, essentially, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, it's missing some of the latest, the latest features, or the most useful, um, like filters and that kind of thing. But right, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna just. What's the best way to do this? I think I might just. Sort of make a selection, um, and then try and sort of pattern it around in a way. See what we end up with. Um, there, new for a new layer via copy. We're going to just get a section. That section I copied out. There it is. 
and I'm going to give ourselves a background to work on. Um, if is there one here? Yep, color fill. This is so similar to Photoshop, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. So now I've got my image on just a blank layer. Um, oh no. <laughs> Contr <laughs> well, not all the shortcuts work. Control T does actually do a new tab in Chrome versus give me controls over a layer. Um, transform controls, that's what I was absolutely after. Shift, even holding down shift constrains everything. Fantastic. So, I'm just going to duplicate this layer and start rotating it. We'll see what, happens, what I can make. So, all controls. I can make the windows line up that'd be even, even better. But I guess as I did it on that, oh, maybe I should have done it the other way around so that. I don't know. Hmm. I should line up, shouldn't I? I don't know. Anyway, what was I doing? So I did. Well, let's do 30 degrees. Yeah, 30. Minus 30. I guess um, like history and things don't work on this, do they? Well, history is there. Can I create a... Uh... I have no idea. I so rarely use the history tool on Photoshop. Um, that's one you're going to have to find out yourself, I think. Is <laughs> <laughs> that I think I've successfully actually managed to make my own lens flare. I'm quite impressed. Well, let's have a look. He's ready. One second. Uh, I'm like, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Go. Started with a rectangle, flattened it down, and then um, mm -hmm. made it a gradient. So it's a color in the middle and then nothing on the outside, like just black. Uh, and then what I did is I made it very small and then applied a glow to it. So we've got a very sharp kind of fall off. Um, Whoa. It works? Yeah, I think it works. I think it needs a bit more tweaking, like, because um, it needs to be a little bit fainter, maybe a little bit softer, and then there needs to be a, a few kind of next to each other and overlapping a little bit. So, um, yeah, work in progress. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, what? Well, back to you, since you were a mid flow. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just sort of messing around. Join the club, you know. <laughs> I know, it's now sparking some ideas of things to do. Um, I don't know I could do it in Photoshop, but I'm not as confident here. Hmm. So. Um, yeah. Oh man, being able to paint uh, and uh, like paint in a lens flare is very satisfying, actually. <laughs> I bet it is. Definitely couldn't do this in MS Paint.
Do layer groups work on Photopia? Uh, I think they do. Yeah, I think I made some layer groups on a previous uh, previous episode. <laughs> it does look like they're going to work. Yeah, okay. So if I've got a layer group, that means I can then go in and have a mask on that. Ah, yes, masking layer groups is fun. It looks like it might work even. Do something with that, can I? Ooh, interesting. Again, don't really know what I'm doing. Um. Oh, now we're really getting somewhere with this, I think. I've just zoomed in to see all of the noise that uh, is still in the the actual photo, and the difference between the noisy areas and the the, the painted areas is massive. Like, it's going to need a <laughs> bit of work afterwards, I think. But uh... actually, why? It's not what I'm doing a photo. But... Um, I should be able to actually copy and transform a load of these at once. That work? And go, oh, it does! Wow. Yeah. Utopia. Nice. Still, it's, it's a good tool. It's still amazing, me. I've created a crazy spinny circular thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um. Controls. I'm going to make another layer mask just on this one to fix the joining issue. Something like that. On this layer, oh man. This, I, I, I'm actually amazed. This looks, it's, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, this is turning out well. I'm just cool. doing a little bit of a painted uh, vignetting. Like, just cut out some of the extra stuff on the edges. And uh, it mm -hmm. seems to be working very, very well. I might try and different edit on this. Now I've got my feel for. 
Hmm. You know what I should do, actually, because I'll have my because I'll have the screen share running the entire time. What we can do is we can um we can do like a, a time lapse of the edits that we've done. All right. I think that might work. Maybe. Not sure. Um. Never copy. I think I might go, rather than going it's not quite so crazy, I'm going to try a similar thing. Um, but something that's going to be easier to duplicate. Hmm. Oh, you know what might be fun to try in the background of that picture? Um, a polar, polar map of the picture with a radial blur on if that makes any sense I need to remind myself what polar map is what it looks like uh, polar map is uh, where you take a square photo and you take the top and wrap that around the center and you take uh, the bottom yeah. it's effectively what allows you to convert um, 360 degree panoramas into uh, planets Alex. and things uh, yes yeah. or convert um 360 degree video into um, something that's actually watchable, like in 3D. Mm. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see what you're going to do with this one. I'm, I'm so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to. I'm going to quickly just share where mine is currently at. Yeah. Here we go. This is where we're sat with mine. I've just added a little bit of vignetting. And a little bit more flaring and things. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna keep working on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to see. Are you trying to do letters, or are you just doing a pattern? What, what's your... No, I'm just yeah, just like a texture, a pattern type thing. I don't, you know, how it's gonna turn out. It's all. Hmm, yeah, fair enough. I was sort of thinking I get to a certain point and then I can then just copy a block over and it'll sort of work. Yeah, absolutely. That, it probably will, yeah. Like... Oh, no, I didn't make it repeat. My bad. Delete those and these. Mm. Delete them, then move just them. I think that's what I meant to do. I think. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? And if we duplicate that folder, there we go. That's what I wanted to be. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I, I'm actually really looking forward to posting this on Instagram. <laughs> I really, really like this. <laughs> um, I feel like I need to put Fantastic. some kind of quote on it. No, maybe not. Lost in the wild. Heading for the light. Needs to be a, in another layer, I think, of this, which is even brighter, just around the feet. That's how I thought I'd do this. Yeah, I've made something. Ooh! <laughs> like, there's an interesting tessellation going on there. 
Yeah. Well, I guess it's I guess it's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. <laughs> Might try doing some sort of gradient fill. Yeah, let's just do that on a blank layer. Let's get some gradient tool. I like a good gradient tool. Yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, hello. Interesting. I won't do that color actually. I think I'll do this blue that was in the background already, sort of thing. Hmm. Going with the blue and the um, the orange, I think, will work quite well, actually. Hmm. Yeah. It lets me slip. I feel like um, Photopia wants you to okay things in a slightly different way than Photoshop does. I so often miss stuff the first time. Yeah, possibly. Oh, man. I've just looked at the time. I know. I know. Do you want to put a time limit on how long we've got left, or do you want to just see how long it takes us to get finished what we're doing? Maybe we should just see how long it takes us. Up to you. Yeah, I don't really know what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would make like an amazing poster background or something, like just that texture and kind of... Yeah. I quite <clears throat> like it. What am I doing here? Um, got a slight flare thing going on. Let's grab another flare, make it even fainter. Because the thing is with flares is um, there's never just one, and it's never um, like they're almost like um, because it's created by the glass of a lens. They are almost like infinite, but they just get dimmer and dimmer. Hmm. So you can kind of just keep going with them. <laughs> Um, at least that's my understanding of it, how the light bounces around inside of a lens. Um, it might be mm. slightly different, but I think that's generally the idea. Or what if I can, can, can you copy between things in the same way you can as Photoshop? Oh, you well, but, can. That's amazing. You can. That is very cool, actually. I did not know that. Utopia still amazing amazes us. Yeah, yeah, that's very handy. I've actually. got a, I've got a very strange abject, ab abstract piece now. <laughs> yeah, this is it's bizarre. <laughs> So that's yeah. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try some layer effects, but I, from previous experience, these are very slow on Photopia. Yeah. Uh, but, yes, um, layer effects are quite. Well, they're slow in Photoshop if you do them too many of them. So uh, yeah, that's. I'm like, let's be fair. It's anything slow in Photoshop if you do too much of it. Um. This extra flare work. It might do. Need to change the center of the flare. It's flare here. Right.
Hmm. The... I'm not has made it. Spread. Size. Direction. Yeah, this is. <laughs> if you ask someone what this was, they have not got a clue. Abstract. It's art. <laughs> you look like a shadow going on there. Let's sh drop shadow. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm trying, yeah. I do quite like that separation there. I feel like this could easily turn into some kind of fractal. <laughs> hmm. You can tell uh, it's in-depth Photoshop when it takes us, uh, I'm like, when it takes me two hours to make one photo. Yeah, man. What it is. Cool. So now that I've got my figure and my flares, I need to add some. Can we see how yours is going? No, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's. Uh... There we go. This is where mine's at. I'm trying to figure out how strong the flares should be. Like, I've got an opacity slider on the flares. Not sure how far I should go with them. Or about whereabouts they should be. I feel like the centre of the, the person should be fine. Um, the flares are, yeah, because you've also got, you get sort of two flares going on. You get the sort of the haze around the subject, and then you also have one that is sort of diagonally mirrored across the image. Yeah. Actually, you know what I'm probably messing up is that the flares will will still come towards the middle of the image. Um, because it always comes around the centre of the lens. So what I'm going to do is just gonna grab one of these elements and move it. Is that the one I want? No, that's not the one I want. This one. Just move it towards the middle of the lens a little bit. Because then it feels like um, a proper lens flare, I guess. I don't know. And then, um, then I was just about to create a copy of the flares and of the figure. Hide for the originals. Oh, that looks weird. Ugh. Um, so, um, then I'm going to merge the group into one layer. Both the figure and the flares. And then I'm going to throw noise onto them to try and get them to match the background and the rest of the photo so let's have a look whoa that's a lot of noise okay we're getting there um Yeah, about 53%. That's quite a lot of noise, but... Yeah, 53%. Now we'll do the same thing to that as well. Oh, wow, that's quite strong. Maybe not quite 53% for the other one. Um, go into noise, add noise, yeah. Maybe like a just a small amount. Let's go with that. Whoa. I think that works. That's a lot more uniform now. I'm gonna save it. I think uh, 
And I think that might be as far as I'm going to get it in Photoshop. It looks good. Yeah. I quite like that. Just see what if I, if I what if anything I can do when I when it gets back into Lightroom. I might might do some final tweaks. Mm. How's yours looking? Have you got any idea what it is yet? <laughs> can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> um. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Simple answer. No. It's just like a strange abstract thing. Um. Yeah. I've just realised how strong the shadows got on the green screen behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're now blocked out on... Yeah, down here somewhere, like, it's all blocked out, so... Yeah, it's because I had to set it up quite close to me before tonight. Uh, let me see if I can do something about it. Okay. What are you, uh, what's the idea then behind what you're currently doing? Like, <laughs> any ideas? <laughs> I don't know, it's just like, you know, sort of abstract play on shapes, really. Um, it's, yeah. It's kind of weird, it's kind of cool, it's kind of strange. It's <laughs> it's weird how Photopia is sort of dealing with... Oh, I know what's happened. So you see how... Can you see the difference between this section on the left and the section on the right? Yeah. That is the dead degradation. Dead, dead, dead degradation. Oh, of the copying. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You can see it. Because, oh, because weird. each of these, as we go around, is a copy of a copy of a clip. copy of a copy. Yeah, that's a copy. Then I copied it again and again and again. And we ended up with a blurry mess. Weird. You, if you wanted to, to, to be very exotic and try and correct it, you could put a radial filter on uh, an effect layer to counteract it. But that might be too much. Although you could do a radial effect on the on a, a layer anyway and just see what it looks like. I don't know. Like a radial blur, you mean? No, it's like a radial or... filter, as in like, um, a, like a, a spectrum or something. Because those all end up looking quite interesting. I don't know. I'm just throwing in more ideas. I don't feel like you need any more ideas. <laughs> I think I've got a bit crazy. Um, I want to actually open just like editing the same image in as many ways as possible. I think. Um, I want to try and see if Photopia can do polar coordinates. Oh yeah, good. I like. I do okay. like polar coordinates. Distort. Uh, yeah, well it's there. Let's see what it does. Let's see how long it takes. It does work. It does work. I'm like polar coordinates work best when you've got a where you've got a um a square image because then that creates yeah. a regular circle. Um, I am going to crop this down square. Hmm. Well, let me. Can I get it to it. No, yes, no. Ah, critics ratio one to one. Okay. I do, um, like, it, it is fun doing, um, so actually, um, I don't know if you saw it, um, when I did a, one of the daily challenges that I've been doing not daily, um, I did a polar map of a pixel sort, and used that, that's quite fun. Right. Ooh. Oh, okay, so this is going to be quite interesting, because this is going to create a swell effect when you do it, because it's on the diagonal. I didn't click the wrong thing. <laughs> the store, um, any pedal corners. Ah. Oh, not quite what I expected. Yeah, that's gone a bit crazy, hasn't it? But if you took a second one and put it on top and flipped it, uh, or rotated it 180 degrees, maybe? Try and blend the two together. Cut me right out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Coordinated wing. <laughs> Well, they haven't quite rotated it on the middle of the um, the polar coordinates, yeah, have you? Ooh. Well, oh, you can almost match up those windows, actually. Like... Oh, yeah. That is strange, isn't it? I, I quite like that. That's that's quite fun. If I should do a GIF or something, it'll be like it's hypnotizing you. 
Just have one spinning on top of the other. Yeah. Or I could do something like... It's weird that it did it in that way though. Let's try this again. Not new. Did one thing. <laughs> Fantastic presets. <laughs> oh, open. The same image. Yeah, that did stuff that I didn't expect it to do. Does Photopia have... It should take the entire contents of the image and that's it. Unless it's spherizing the layer instead of the... Um, unless it's um, polar mapping the layer rather than the entire image. But it should do the entire imi uh, the image and it should return a, a perfect... I don't think it works in the same way. I feel like it's got not, a slightly no. different algorithm. Yeah. That is the whole image. And I do filter now. Distort. Overwatch. Yeah. That's really strange. It's it's good I think it's doing a non destructive crop. In a weird way. If I were to crop again, would it be able to bring back parts? I don't know. Test, wouldn't it? Yes, it can. So it brought okay. back bits, which means it's doing a non-destructive crop. So maybe try doing a destructive crop. Just to see. You know You've got the option. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can. Yeah, me neither. No, that's still not destructive. Okay, so Photopia has its limits. I has think. its limits. Yeah, fair enough. We can just try some crazy things there, see what it can do. Whoa, that was cool. Ooh. I'm like, now we're getting weird and abstract. Oh, wow. Ooh. I'm like, save that out. There you go. <laughs> I'm cropping it bigger. Oh, oh. Ooh. Ah, no, that, that looks like a polar map. That, that looks like something. <laughs> it looks like something. Definitely, definitely something. <laughs> I keep cropping out to see what. There we go. Oh my! Now that's that's what I was expecting. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, you just do like a cool crop on that. Maybe cut, change the colours, or like do some stuff on top of it. But like that swirl is. Really cool. Actually, the um, the loading photo to Photoshop was like was using that effect for a long time before they updated it. I mean, it was a 2019 version of Photoshop used an image like that. Hey, was it? Yeah, it might have been 2018 even actually. There we go. <laughs> Oh, interesting nice. crop. That's strange, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, so we've got all... Oh, do you know what I just had an idea of? <laughs> We're just going to keep <laughs> having ideas all night. There's more and more ideas. What if I do, a, what if I do one of these crazy... Is that... What's the, what did I do? This door. I think I did twirl or something. No, it's not. It's, ah, okay. The computer says no. Okay. Let's just do it again. That's funny. <laughs> oh, no, not new. Let's do another crazy edit. Crazy edits! Let's do some voiceover in our video. I guess it's different, actually. So I've actually gone back into Lightroom and done some more edits on top of my Photoshop work. Lots more okay. edits. And I'd be intrigued to see what you think of the difference. It's not a massive difference. But I've just brought out the thing. I brought out the the brightness of the figure a little bit more. So this is our this is the edit, and then this is before. Okay. Again, I'll be a, a few a minutes tiny, till I can actually see it's it. It's a tiny difference. Um,
Unless you want to share your screen with me over the Skype call. I might better see what you're doing live. No, or might that break it? It's too late now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there we go. Yeah, um, so there we see go. It. Like you could even, um, I'm gonna create a virtual copy and just try playing with some crops. I think. Create a virtual copy. Yeah, it's subtle to edit, but it, it ties it together maybe. Possibly, I don't know. Just it just pumps up the the brightness of it just a little bit more. Hmm. Oh, this this twirl feels is crazy. Oh, let's have a look. Oh my days! Look at that. <laughs> It is a bit laggy. <laughs> That's not doing anything. Oh dear. Oh, yeah. We might be reaching the limit. <laughs> yeah, and oh, I'm waiting. Oh, oh my god, that's what's loading. Whoa! Look that. <laughs> that looks so low. No, we keep it on the amount it was before because it looks like it's been. looks psychedelic. That does. <laughs> Welcome to the new. Uh, that's quite ultimate cool. reality. We're going to a new dimension. <laughs> What if? Okay, try this. I'm intrigued. Uh, try this, the the twerp, the swirl. But before you do it, do a radial blur on the entire picture. Okay. I'm so intrigued to see that. what that looks like. So try try doing a radial blur. Oh, God, press the wrong button. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, God. I kind of want to try one of these myself now. <laughs> okay, I didn't want service player. I wanted. I'm gonna try one. I'm gonna load up a photo into Photoshop, okay. You're gonna out Photoshop me. Maybe, who knows? I'm like I'm using a faster computer. Um like I'm already on it's the radio that... blur. Okay. You are using Photoshop, which is not. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> Versus this in browser. Oh wow. The interest wow, you can get some very interesting effects from radial blur. Oh okay. page unresponsive. <laughs> okay. My uh, my page become responsive. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh no, you got it, you got it. Yeah. Store back to twelve. <laughs> oh, crikey! Ooh. Yeah, that's the, is that the radial blur? Is it? Oh, it's twelve. That's right. That's twelve on the radial blur, right? Yeah, that's so, what. You, yeah. So try going up to the level that you were at before, and I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens. <laughs> we'll get there. This is just us exploring Photoshop now, isn't it? <laughs> see, th what it's done is that smoothed out the details. Yeah in the um in the scenery so it almost now looks like some kind of light trail mm. i'm gonna do this and then um okay how about this um you want to let's put a time limit on see what the most interesting 12 pictures that either of us can get in that amount of time how about that as the end of the stream okay um yeah, I mean, I'm, not new time. I'm just gonna, yeah, what, so five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Let me get a timer up. <laughs> My headphones just died. Oh no! <laughs> it's, a, it's a sign. You can are, you hear ready, me. are you ready to, I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Um, are you ready to start the timer? Yeah, I mean, am I starting from a new image or? Yeah, yeah, no, you, you can have a head start because you're using Photopia. Okay. Um, Okay then, let's do five minutes. Okay. Do five minutes on the clock, it's going. Going. Okay.
I'm taking a picture of towers and seeing what I can do with that. Mm -hmm. Whoa, okay. That's not quite what I expected. Interesting though. Okay. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> I'm just going to keep flicking back between our screens because mm. uh, who knows what's going to happen. Ah, uh, what I'm going to do is go. Mm. Yeah, that first thing you did was weird. <laughs> Some of these, I just think I've never Whoa, used Whoa! That is weird! <laughs> I've just never used them. Oh my gosh. How is it even? It feels like. I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh god. That is funky, that is. Oh my gosh. This is mental. <laughs> Ooh, things are getting wavy. <laughs> oh man, my Photoshop's really struggling now. I should have closed my other image before I started doing this edit. Oh. Uh, no. <sighs> Ram meltdown. Right, uh, next one. Distort polar coordinates. Go. That's not quite, not quite right. Why doesn't that look right? <laughs> Oh, I know why. Uh, that's because. Yeah, that's why. We need to do a destructive prop. Then we can do it. Photoshop does the same thing by, look, by the looks of it with uh, polar coordinates and non-destructive cropping. Okay. Oh, it's still not quite right. I don't know what's going on there. Um, Oh, I know why, it's because it's... Okay. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's weird. It's interesting. <laughs> Ooh, weird. Right, here we go. Please work. <gasps> okay, interesting. Good. I don't think I can make mine much better, really. I really like it. I like it a lot. I can do to it. I might try mirroring it. Oh man, I'm gonna run out of time. I'm not going nearly as fast as I thought I'd be able to. Ah! What have we got left? We have 37 seconds. <laughs> Six, oh man. Five, four, three, three, two, two. Right, okay. Um, ah. Right. Come on. Load quicker. Right, that's weird. Um, let's see if I've got time to be able to un unpolar coordinates it. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that's weird. Um, that's not quite what I expected. Um, all right, and then the final step. Twelve. <laughs> Cause you were so fine that I got paid.
Uh, okay. <laughs> That's intriguing. Um, I think we're about. To, we're out of time. I'm still playing around. Um, I think I'm just gonna revert back to my previous thing that has preferred it. I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy shapes. I'm still desperately trying to do things that I should stop. That was me the other week. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I've got it. I've got mine. I've got mine. Let's see. There you go. That is so weird. There's no way that I would believe that that was from Towers. But I really like it. <laughs> it looks really sci fi. Oh. We call it like the twirl and things could be like an effect layer. Oh yeah, that is cool. That's totally unexpected, but that looks like a freaking render or something. <laughs> um that that is double polar coordinates plus radial blur on a mirrored wow. image. So I'll show you what the original image looked like. This is the this is the original. I mirrored it. There's just a picture of towers in the mist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that's what it came out as, which I'm amazed at. Oh well, okay, we're out. Of, we're out of time. <laughs> oh man. Well, there we go. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at your final version then. Let's have a look. So we've got. That's I really like the colours going on in yours. Like, it's much more interesting colours than mine. Yeah, I mean... I need to give some credit to you, because it's essentially you suggested this edit, so... Yeah, but... You know... We'll, we'll put it up to the vote, I guess, and see what happens. Yeah. There we go. Like I, feel like I, might, I feel like I've got a chance of winning. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to speak too soon. Maybe too soon. I don't know. Although we've also got to put up the ones from last week. Yeah. But there we go. That's some oh. crazy things. <laughs> crazy things. I mean, I'm really intrigued to see what... I won't submit the edits that I do. I just want to see what mine looks like if I edit it in Lightroom after I've done, done that to it. Like, what mad details can I bring out of it? Like, if I put clarity up. Look at that. Mm. I'm like, that is weird, but I really, really like it. The, what, the amount of colour you can bring out of this is incredible. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, ignore that. There we go. Reset it. Cool. Well. Um, there we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. That one of those sorts sort of makes me mind reminds me of the um, this shot from 2001: Space Odyssey, where you sort of got reflections in the helmet. Oh yeah, it does actually. It does look like it's um, it does look like it's a, a helmet of some description, doesn't it? Mm. Like, There's like spherical reflections and things going on. Yeah. Interesting. It's very unintentional, but I, I'm, I want to try more photos like that now. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, everybody. Interesting, weird effect you can do. Take an image that is completely innocuous, mirror it in the middle, <laughs> polar coordinates it so it turns into a circle, blur it, and then polar coordinates it again. There we go. Um, <laughs> And then, what, were you, what did you do your, on yours, uh, Sam? What were the edits on yours? Mine was... Um, it was Radial Blur and Twirl, I think. Cool. Oh, the... Looks really weird. Like, you zoom into this picture. Like, look at this. You could go... It looks like it's been painted or something. <coughs> it's mm. very odd. Like... I really like that texture, that's amazing. Oh, 
I might just uh, cut that and uh, upload that as a picture as well. Like, that's really interesting. Yeah. Can you see that on stream now? I can now see it on stream. You started talking about uh, painting and things. Oh, there we go. Okay, right. We should probably call it there, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> We've been streaming for two and a half hours. Yeah. Like yeah. It's getting, you know, getting longer every time. <laughs> well, mind you, I think last time was uh, two and a half hours as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's slightly less important this time, though. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, I hope everybody enjoyed watching this slightly chilled chatty stream it's just us talking for a while isn't it effectively um <laughs> but yeah um thanks for joining again yeah sam uh hopefully next week we'll have more people on i don't really know depends who's free yeah it'd be cool to get a group a group yeah. going yeah like a group um a group editing thing would be good fun as well um maybe we migrate over to like Zoom or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm like. Um, it depends if we can have multiple people screen sharing. That's if that works or not. Yeah. Yeah. If we can, then that would work. Um, if anybody knows, do comment. That would be great to know. If anybody, yeah. uh, anybody knows. Because it might be quite cool if we could just have each one, each person's screen up. Mm. You know, what, I don't know. Yeah. What effectively we want is like a um, a big grid view of everybody editing, and then yeah. we can zoom into individual people. Mm, That's mm. going. Also, um, comments very much do like the idea of doing a photo editing in paint challenge. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm not possible. sure how we're going to do that, but we can try. Um, yeah, if if if, everybody, if you like the idea of that. Uh, comment below this video uh, or send us a message on the Facebook page and we'll do it. I mean, yeah, we could also do stuff with um, like painting, not uh, like PowerPoint with this. PowerPoint? You know, like gradients on things. And, oh my days. Has... <laughs> I'm like, if we want to go weird, like we could go uh, photo editing in Illustrator. Like you've got to do everything with vectors. That would be you know, some strange results of that. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we shall see you next week. Um, stay safe, everybody. And uh, yeah. That's it. Photosock out. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> oh, synchronize.